then when you told us that you got it, we were just like, yeah. I was just in shock. I was like, really? I wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went for the interview. A solid hour of really, really tough questions. Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're making a bit of a casual video. This is Chelsea, who is my very special guest for today. And I say casual video because we are in Chelsea's boyfriend's bedroom. <laughs> the best place very to casual. film. Very casual. <laughs> but you know, never miss an opportunity for Chelsea to share all of her wisdom. So exactly. she's been very kind and offered to come on this channel today. So I guess I will start off by letting Chelsea tell you a little bit about herself and what she's doing. And we can ask some questions from there. Awesome, so I'm Chelsea. I'm originally from Yorkshire. Um, I did my undergrad in Biomed in Newcastle mm -hmm. and then I then did an MRes Translational Council of Medicine at King's We're before starting it. my whoop, <laughs> <laughs> whoop. <laughs> before starting my PhD at Oxford. I'm now in my second year and I'm doing an oncology. So Chelsea and I actually met on the master's course but we actually went to the same university, which is weird. So Chelsea, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really strange because we never met during university because Chelsea is a year below me, but we met on the masters. So I guess a lot of people who might be watching this might want to know a bit more about the research side of things and why you, I guess, decided to go and do the masters and why you decided to go and do a PhD. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So I've kind of always wanted to do research. I'm really interested in kind of the science and the problems solving and actually seeing patient benefit you know from bench to bedside that's mm -hmm. quite cool um, so to do a PhD it is very useful to do a master's which is the main reason why I want to do it that's actually where I got most of my experience so all yeah. kind of the technical experience just the mm -hmm. basic kind of how a lab works how science works in academia mm -hmm. I found it really really useful for that and I definitely. think PhDs it's definitely a bonus to have a master's I think it's quite tough to get one yeah. without and MRes I think tends to be slightly preferred to an MSc. Do you know anybody who has gotten into a PhD without necessarily doing a master's. Yeah, 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 I know lots of people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they had quite good uh, research projects or maybe did some um, yeah. kind of placements in their second year in undergrad yes. or maybe even in their third year, which is what I did. Yeah, they went through that way. Yeah. Or some of them kind of did um, integrated masters in their... Uh, of course, yeah, I think our course offered that as well Yeah, when yeah, we did yeah. our undergrad. But think so. personally, I think it was a really good choice to do the masters because as you said, most of, I think, what we picked up, we picked up from there. And I think we were quite fortunate that we got two projects as well yes that's very true so th this is a tip that I usually give there are some masters I think it's usually the MSCs where you do six months of learning and six months of project but we did two lots of six months in a lab. And how did you find it? Because I definitely speak about the fact that I loved it, but there were times where it was like very challenging. And do you think it was representative of doing a PhD? I think it is quite similar. I mean, it's different in the sense of it's a lot, lot shorter. It's actually, in some ways, it's a lot more intense. Yes. So I found oh I worked God. a lot harder, had a lot less sleep yeah. and things yeah. in my masters. Yeah. Yeah, because you've only, well, for us, we only had six months per project. Yeah to write the thesis as well and get mm -hmm. all your data. Um, yeah. I really liked it though, because you know, yeah. you had opportunity to do two different fields, as it were, different techniques, meet yeah. different groups, you know, a bit of networking. I really liked it. Um, mm -hmm. I think the teaching, you kind of, you learn that in your field, because you, you obviously choose projects that you're interested in. Yeah. And um, we did have some lectures that were more for interest, yeah. kind of more, you know, that the university is doing research in. That was quite interesting. Yeah, that was really good. And I think what I personally liked is after coming out of Biomed, where we had loads of exams, it was nice to just do dissertations and mm. not have to think, okay, I need to learn this for my exam. It was good that everything was practical. Yeah, and you know what you're writing about by then. You've done it for six months. So exactly. You're kind of an expert on yeah. your project. So. Yeah. I actually have got some questions. I was trying to freestyle <laughs> it, and I, I don't trust my own memory because I've already <laughs> forgotten the questions that I sent Chelsea earlier. So I think the other thing that I wanted to ask you is when you were applying to your PhDs, like, the, like can you talk a little bit about the PhD process? Because again, this is a question I get asked, and I don't think I'm really qualified because I had made a few applications here and there like way back but how did you find it from the time when you were in the middle of your masters to applying to be honest it is quite tough and it is quite draining because you're, you're doing your masters you're kind of yeah. at the end of your project you know you're yeah. writing your thesis you're quite busy so it's quite yeah. tough um, actually I did get a lot of rejections as well I kind yeah. of went for um, quantity which is not always the best idea you, you definitely want to apply for things you want to do don't just yeah. apply for things for the sake of it because yes. you, you know you're going to be there three or four years and then you're specialised in that field kind of forever yeah so yeah I kind of went on findaphd.com which was very useful yeah. I went on the actual university sites and sometimes yeah. I literally just googled you know PhD 
PhDs to do with my field. So for, yeah. I was interested in CAR T cells, so I looked for PhDs in CAR T cells and I found things that way. Yes. So you can do that. So it's quite tough. Um, you have to write um, a CV or like a, per mm -hmm. and a personal statement, yeah. a cover letter, and then you have your interview. So it's definitely good in your um, CV to definitely have all as much research experience as you mm -hmm. can, for sure. And try to talk about that a bit, maybe even talk about the techniques mm -hmm. that you've done, you've done, any maybe papers you've helped towards, yeah. or any posters, you know, what you've got from the experience. Yes. They don't mind as much about kind of volunteering and you know, all yeah. that other. That's a bit more like recreational. Yeah. For sure, it's a bit different to medicine. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say like, just keep going. Like it's, it's very tough to get a PhD sometimes. And if you don't get it, it's mm -hmm. definitely worth just going, being a research assistant or maybe getting some yeah. more experience. Like, th that's a really big plus. Uh, quite a lot of research assistants, they get them internally for a PhD. They can hire internally. Because it's like sometimes certain labs when they hire a research assistant, they're almost like training you so that you already know everything. And then when you go into being a student, you already know the group, you already know the people. So that's a really It's kind of like thing. a first year, you know, you're already trained. Yeah. Up. So when, when you actually start the project, you're you know good to go doing. basically. It saves you a lot of time. And even if you don't, like, you know, kind of collaborators will take yeah, you on a bit yeah. more. And just having that much research experience and kind of knowledge experience, yeah, they really like it. And you know, I've just remembered this. Do you mind sharing with them the story of actually getting into Oxford? Because when you told me that, you know everything oh, about your yeah. <laughs> like it, it's such like, I mean, now it's a nice story, but I know at the time, and I think, do you want to share that? Because I of think that's a really yeah, good... Yeah. So they were very misleading at first. They kind of told me, they had told me I had an interview. So I went for the interview. And um, we had to give a presentation about our project that we're doing yeah. in our masters, which was fine. Mm -hmm. So I did that. That went okay. We do have some tough questions, but you kind of mm -hmm. you get through that. And if you can't answer them, just try the best. Like I'm yeah. not sure that's interesting to try, or I've read this paper which can relate. Um, and then we had um, kind of a solid hour of really really tough questions. I was quite surprised. I thought it'd be more like. Why do you want to do a PhD? Mm. What experience do you have? But it was quite actually biological questions. They were like grilling you, but I've heard Oxbridge is a bit Very like tough. that. So they were essentially giving you like a mock viva before she's even It was started. stuff I had no idea it was about. So I'm more of a kind of cancer immunologist. It was all about mm. the cell cycle and kind of God. metabolism. I had no idea. So you don't lie, just say, I don't I know. Don't really I mean, you say, I'm not sure, but I kind of remember it could be something to do with this, or I've heard this, you know, try give something, don't just say I don't know and give up. So yeah, or try relate it to the things you do know, try switch yeah. it, I tried to veer it towards immunotherapy every time. Yeah. So it was absolutely horrendous, <laughs> really horrendous. They also, sorry, I forgot to say, they do give you kind of some um, situational tests, they give okay. you some results, some data, yeah. and they kind of say, so what would you do after this, or what can you tell from this data? So it's just, yeah. you know, dummy data, A, B, drugs A, B, C, or whatever. Yeah. So you do that, which was okay. So this interview went absolutely terribly. I was really upset afterwards, went home, and then I got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna question That's it. Amazing. Not gonna question it. I think what they do is they do stress test you. So That's you might so feel, true. sometimes if you feel it's going horrendously, it's because they've pushed you so far, they yeah. get you to the point where you can't answer. Yeah. So I think that's actually sometimes quite a good thing. I, I think it's definitely a good thing because it's a, it's the same with certain jobs you apply to as well and like certain other courses. And I always think if they have pushed you to that point, they like you because mm. if they don't, if you come out of an interview, sometimes, not always, but sometimes if you feel like the people, it, it almost went too easily, you just think, well, they didn't care that much, they wouldn't push you as much. So they want to like... Exactly. A lot of the kind of interviews for a PhD, it's kind of a formality. If they've chosen you out for an interview, they probably already want you. They just want yeah. to check. I think quite yeah. a lot of it does go on your CV and your research experience. That's That was probably a plus for me. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, a lot of, them, a lot of the interviews were just like yeah. disinterested. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm boring them. Yeah. But, um... The sad part is though, this is one issue that sometimes happens. I, I'm telling you guys this because if people apply for PhDs and sometimes if you don't get it, don't be disheartened because as we just said, there is an element of sometimes labs might have people in mind. Yeah. So for the people who you interviewed with and they may have seemed disinterested, it might not be that they were disinterested in you, it's just that they may have already, they may already have other candidates in mind. There which... was actually a PhD I went for, yeah. um, a CAR T cell one in uh, Cardiff. I went yeah. to the interview and I, I thought it went okay, but I didn't get it. Mm. But I was told actually she was already kind of going to internally take Hi, somebody on, which is a bit naughty because they have to advertise it, but they already had someone in mind from the start, but they have to interview as a formal, yeah. you know, to say they've done it, Yeah. which is a bit unfair. Yeah. And actually going back, so um, I did have another interview at UCL and again, oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. get it, oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, then they offered this. me something else. So you, you might not get the one you go for, but they can yeah. give you something else. Yeah. And I think the thing is with PhDs and things like that is sometimes you just have to get your PhD and then you can move into the field you want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not like other courses where you definitely have to study that course. So for example, you could have done, I don't know, like a genetics project in your 
your undergrad and then done a PhD in like immunology. Yeah. It's not because the techniques and stuff are the same. Yeah, but I just I just remember that though because like oh god it takes me back because I remember <laughs> you you were like just like really bummed out and you told me that Will had like hidden some chocolates or something for you. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just the cutest thing. And then when you told us that you got it, we were just like yeah. I was in shock. I was like, really? I wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no. But it works, so. And, you know, Chelsea's being, like, modest. Like, genuinely. <laughs> like, even during our Masters, she worked so hard. And you did so you. well. <laughs> You're very welcome. Like, I was so jealous, seriously. Aww. So, had to be noted. Okay, so, moving swiftly on from the application process. So, it is a tough process, but obviously it's doable. And you just do have to have a little bit of confidence in yourself as well. And yeah, also, for sure. And also remember that there are different PhDs that will be matched better to you. So, just because you don't get one, don't think that you can't do a PhD at all. Maybe you just need to find a lab where, it, like, that what they want matches your expertise and the things that you know about. So, I think that's worth saying. Okay, so when you first started doing your PhD, how did you find like the transition of obviously going from a master's to a PhD and how did you find that overall? Yeah, so it was it was quite strange at the start because you're very much left to your own devices. And to be honest, it really depends on the lab you go into, like how established yeah. it is. So the lab I went to is actually quite a new lab. Mm -hmm. and I didn't, I unfortunately didn't have a postdoc, so I kind of had to set everything up oh myself. God, you know, yeah, yeah, there's things you, you don't think about as a master's student. You know, you have to st make stocks. You know, you have to take stock take, check you've yeah. got everything, check the basic functioning of the lab. You know, look after yeah. students, things like this. You didn't really think about before. Mm -hmm. um, so that was quite tough. I mean, I was kind of used to the intense work working from my masters which was good yeah. and I look I used a lot of the techniques I used yeah. um, which is good um, it's definitely good to work together with other PhD students try and work yeah. things out together but a good point that you've just mentioned that I think when you're a master student you definitely have more autonomy than when you were in your undergrad but there is still an element of people do hold your hand a little bit I yeah. guess and they provide you more support but having said that do you think the fact that you came into a lab that was that didn't have I guess more senior people do you think it helped to like shape you a bit more yeah so it really so, depends on what can you kind of want if you want mm -hmm. to kind of you know have all that support then that's great Trent go for yeah. a more established lab but for me I was actually quite grateful because I'm, I'm much more aware of all these things you know I'm a lot more yeah. experienced I've worked everything out for myself so I really understand yeah. everything yes yeah. so that, that was good okay so this is this is why I ask everybody who I interview so tell me about some of the challenges you face in your journey I guess but you, you can talk about your PhD alone or you can talk about just any time from choosing biomed to doing your PhD tell me about some of the challenges yeah so I guess the first kind of hurdle was getting the PhD like I yeah. said it was very kind of exhausting, very yeah. disappointing a lot of the time, you know, you've just got to keep going, or like I said, try going to research another way. Yeah. So that was difficult. Um, again, starting the PhD, like I said, not having as much support and kind Learning of getting curve. used to it. Yeah. I think the, the main difficulty with my PhD so far is kind of a finding your story, because you're given a story God, to yeah, start yeah. with, but honestly, like, people say you just veer off in all directions, yeah. like, I still don't really have my set story. Yeah, kind of learning all of the techniques, learning how to kind of plan experiments mm. and think for yourself, because That's you're hard. super is yeah. not always there. Quite often supervisors, you know, are in once a week. Yeah. You don't see them very often. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. So definitely planning things, making sure they're going to go somewhere. And I think one of the hardest things is dealing with like bad results or just not what, you know, uh, yeah. not the results you expected. I mean, you, you, honestly, it's up and down all the time. Quite a lot of the time it's down. Yeah. A lot of the time it just doesn't work. But you know, when it goes, when it does work, it's, it's like, like so like, much better. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, that's the thing. I feel like it's a lot of extremes and you have to be able to like switch off and you have to be able to I guess ground yourself so that when you crash you don't yeah. like completely crash and when you're really high you remind yourself that like this isn't going to be forever you just have to do yeah that. exactly you've kind of got to be okay dealing with disappointment yeah. on a daily basis yeah. kind, of, <laughs> yeah. kind of expecting it <laughs> no no that's true I mean I definitely faced that in my masters at different points but I think it's a kind of thing where I, I compare it to like pregnancy it's a kind of thing where you go through like a lot of pain and then once you have your baby once you're sat there holding your thesis like oh, Dr okay. Chelsea <laughs> yeah no you'll be fine and you're gonna be like oh, I, I can't believe I made it through <laughs> so what advice would you give like what do you think you've learned that you could if somebody said Chelsea I um, do my undergrad and I want to do a PhD what kind of things would you tell them I would try find an interest for a start you need to actually be mm -hmm. passionate about your field to yeah. so try try things out you know try definitely try to get research experience mm -hmm. and if you're not interested in it, try something else yeah. I mean, just definitely try to get as much experience as you can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but that's a good point I think like having an interest at the beginning is quite important because you can you can steer yourself in the right way and you 
don't go off path too much. I think I was quite lucky personally because I found cancer research and I really enjoyed it and for me it was just hopping on from there. And I guess kind of advice when choosing a PhD, I would definitely try go to the lab, see kind of your working oh, environment, yeah, try yeah, meet yeah. the team, try talk to the supervisor because the yeah. supervisor does quite often make the PhD if he's going to be there, if you're going to get on, mm. things like that. And I think no, actually talking to the team I think is really important Sh for because sure because they will be able to tell you what the, they'll be able to tell you like either indirectly or directly what the dynamics going to be like right yeah. so you can work out if it's for you or not and then you try work out if you want to have um, a new established group or kind of a very set in stone large group so yeah. it depends if you, you know you want all of the attention on yourself because a good thing for me being a small group mm. whenever we publish a paper I am quite often a oh, co-author yeah, yeah th and so that's, that's a good, really possibly, good it's very much helping each other out and so we always get on yeah. each other's papers which is very good but in yeah. a larger group you maybe don't have it you maybe don't always know what somebody else is doing you don't know their yeah. project so well yeah so exactly but then I guess the pro of that is that you have more people to talk to you so do you have a lot more support for sure okay so I guess on a final final note are you happy with the path you've taken and would you recommend it because it is tough and I think Chelsea's being like really honest which is good because you need to know like it, it can be great but it does have a lot of challenges but despite all of it net results would you do it again personally I would it very much depends on the type of person you are because if you're somebody else you really might have hated it not enjoyed yeah. it but for me I've really really enjoyed it I'm doing something I'm really passionate about you know I enjoy going in I I enjoy the flexibility, kind of the freedom. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a bit more freedom go when you go in, you know, your working hours. There's a lot more freedom with what you're doing. You can choose yeah. your experiments, which is quite exciting. You yeah. can read a paper, say, oh, I went to look at that. And quite yeah. often your supervisor will support you. Yes. So that's very cool. It, the opportunity to collaborate and go to conferences abroad. Oh my God, yeah. That's yeah. really, really cool. Okay, well, Charles, thank you so much for yeah, no being worries. on the channel and <laughs> answering the questions. I really hope you guys got more of a realistic view of what it's like to do a PhD and what it's like to apply and yeah if you have any other questions for us leave it below and thank you so much for being on the channel no we will see you in the next one bye, bye.